Hi, welcome back to OMG The Cloud. Today in our TrueNAS series, we're gonna take a look at the ZFS file system. ZFS is a different animal when it comes to file systems, and it's a really great step forward in old file systems in the traditional sense. It alleviates a lot of problems that you see in larger data pools, especially when you have a lot of data that might not be accessed as often as you think. Let's think about our home network storage. You've got this huge media catalog. You've got all these files and stuff. You're not looking at these files every day, of course. So there's something called bit rot that is a common problem in different file systems. And essentially what bit rot is, is where you might have some data that's sitting and you know your, your file system, it might be backed by RAID 5, another type of parity algorithm, but the file system itself is not aware that you've got some bad data. You've got a few bits that have flipped and now you've got some corrupted files. That's called bit rot. ZFS, on the other hand, alleviates bit rot. So this is something you can read about in detail, but just know that that is something that is solved in the ZFS file system. Now, another thing that's really integral to the way that ZFS works is the way that it uses snapshots. So we're gonna take a look at that today as well. So the file system itself, essentially, you've got your whole data set, and then you've got this ledger of the file system of what the actual files are, where they live, when they were written, all that metadata. Now that is tightly wound into ZFS. So that allows you, when you take a snapshot, that's basically telling the file system, this point in time, backwards, is what comprises this file system up until now. And then the snapshot is everything from this point forward, okay? And the snapshots nest essentially indefinitely so that you can roll this up, all these snapshots, and this creates your file system. So when you take a snapshot, the combination of that snapshot, the metadata, and the actual data underneath it is what creates your file system. So let's take a quick look at that. If we get into our file system, I wanna take a look. I have a bunch of snapshots here for some container data. And what I'm doing in my file system is I'm snapshotting some NFS mounts for my Docker containers, and I'm doing those pretty frequently. I'm doing those every hour, okay? There's no real penalty to doing frequent snapshots other than you've gotta store them all and you have to sift through them, but there's no real performance hit on the file system. It's not like you're taking backups and storing them somewhere every time. You're just telling the file system, here's a checkpoint, here's a checkpoint, here's a checkpoint, okay? Now, that lets you roll back really quickly. You can do a couple different things though. So if I were to go to say this point in time and expand this out, I'm gonna be able to do two things. I can either roll back to this point in time or I can clone this to a new data set. Now, when I hit clone, what it's gonna do is essentially make a new fork of that file system. So now typically what you're actually doing there is telling the file system, hey, I need to retrieve a file from this point. Okay, something maybe I deleted or modified. So when I clone that, let's do that. Clone data set, okay. So I clone it and by default, the name, this is gonna be the mount point that it's actually gonna show up in the file system as the data set name and the point in time. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So we're gonna stick with that and hit submit, okay. If I get into that actual file system and take a look, I now have this other data set and it is named as the snapshot was. So if I actually go into that, that's a full blown file system. That's something you can get into and access. So if I go and change directories into that and take a look at that, this has all of my actual files, okay? From that point in time. Uh, I can copy files out of there, I can retrieve them, and then once I'm done, I can just back out my terminal session and I can go into my storage, I'll go to pools, I'll see that actual snapshot is mounted as another data set, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the end of that thing and delete data set. It's gonna ask us to confirm that file name, delete data set, and it's gone. We got what we needed out of that, we copied a file, now we are back and running as normal. You can also roll back snapshots. Now this, you have to be really, really careful with. Let's go into our snapshots. Let's say I went back in time a few days and I realized that I needed to just roll back, okay? Something happened, I did a bunch of changes on the fly and I don't know, I made a mess in my own file system. I wanna get in here, I want to just roll back to that point in time. You can hit the roll back button here and it's gonna give you some warnings here. So let's take a look at these warnings. This is really good and it's important to pay attention to. So if we're rolling back more than just to the most recent snapshot, 
it's gonna delete all the snapshots forward of that, okay? So rollback is something you have to be really, really careful and be certain that that's what you wanna do. Fortunately, TrueNAS is nice enough to build in a, a nice warning dialogue here to make sure you're warned about what you're doing here, okay? So we're not actually gonna do this. I do not wanna roll back my file system to that particular point in time. I just wanted to show you this dialogue. So that's it guys. I just wanted to go over ZFS snapshots really quick. We're gonna do a little bit more of a deep dive into this in the future with an episode on how we do cloud sync to push our backups into the cloud. Say Amazon S3, Amazon S3 Glacier Deep Archive. Pretty cheap solution for your backups. It's all encrypted. We're gonna check that out. I think you're gonna like it. Hit me up in the comments. I'd like to know what you think of this. If there's other things you'd like to see around the ZFS file system, we can certainly do some other deep dives. If you found this valuable, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you see the next video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.